name is Christina Erb. I'm a real estate agent with EXP Realty and a local leader with Park Bench. Um, I am here today interviewing Frank. He is a mortgage specialist over at um, Barrett Financial. He runs the A team there. So thank you, Frank, so much for being here and doing the interview today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, we're excited to learn more about you and um, kind of your place in, in the um, mortgage and lending field and side of things. So okay. let's just start off um, by telling us a little bit about your background and like how you kind of got into this field, how long you've been in this field. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll go in reverse because that's how I can remember. So I've been doing this for 30 years. When I say that out loud, that's like super embarrassing because apparently <laughs> I'm as almost as old as Jesus. So um, I've been doing this for 30 years. Um, what got me in the industry is that I had a friend of mine working in it, uh, to be candid, and he said, hey, you should come talk to us and learn about what we do. And so I sat down and, and understood, asked a lot of questions um, to understand really about what I did is I sat down and read the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA guideline books. And it took me six months to do so because I asked the owner of the company, well, what do you guys do here? Well, we underwrite the guidelines, basically. I'm like, what does that even mean? And he pointed to these dusty books on the shelf. True story. So I looked up at him. I'm like, okay. So I took them home one by one and read them, you know, for months. And then I understood the guidelines. It's almost like an attorney trying to understand the law. Once you understand the law, then you can understand what the judge is, is going to ask you for. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can present a good case for your client, which happens to be a judge and underwriter almost are synonymous in regards to what they do. So an underwriter is trying to prove a loan, a judge is trying to say whether or not guilty or what have you. And then, you know, so that's what I understood by understanding the guidelines that helped me uh, to further my career out of quickly. Okay. Yeah. So obviously you got off to a really good start. Um, what's your business like now compared to when you first started since it has been 30 oh, Wow. I've seen a lot of ebb and flows in the markets regarding recessions, interest rates increase and decrease. Um, when I started in the industry, <laughs> interest rates were at 12 and a half percent interest. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally, that's so crazy compared to like the. I know. And I got to tell you, though, when we call people up to do what we call streamlined refis, we were the first company in the country to do those out of Tucson, Arizona, that we were able to drop clients rates from 12 and a half to eight and a half. And then two years later, eight and a half to six and a half. And they literally thought they hit the lottery because the interest rates decreased by that much. So to me, when I see interest rates under five, I think it's a bargain. Yeah. And, and for people out there that are, you know, maybe looking to buy a home now and they're a little bit scared that the interest rates have gone up a little bit, they're still record low compared to these history, you know, the history of interest rates. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, when I look at interest rates now, people complain about them going up an eighth or a quarter. I just like, wow, you just don't know. <laughs> you don't get it, yeah. It's cheap money. It's just strength. It's, it's candid, cheap money. And I deal with a lot of investors as well that understand this. And this is the reason why they're leveraging themselves in order to pull out money from assets in order to buy more properties because they understand the value short-term and long-term in buying uh, real estate. Uh, all over the United States, I'm doing loans for investors. Yeah, exactly. And like, like you said, when you think about it long term, like, you're not going to buy a house and sell it next year, like you're, you're going to stay there. Hopefully, correct. Like that's yeah. usually the goal. So we're, you're thinking long term goals. Yeah. And, and there are uh, investors out there that are what we call investor flippers that'll buy a property and rehab it maybe 30, 60, 90 days in and maybe put 10 or 20 or 30,000 of rehab into the property and flip it, make themselves a little bit of a decent commission. But what investors have really turned to lately, especially about some of these loan programs that we have, uh, that is specialty loan products geared towards investors uh, that we can talk about in, in, you know, at quite length. But they've come to realize is that it's better to buy and hold that is the buy and flip because the buy and hold means you're going to increase your profit margin by this over a span of time. And then over 20, 30 years, you depreciate the property. And then all of a sudden now you have a free and clear property that's just paying you dividends every month. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what would you say people love most about your business? Uh, as an employee or clients that we work with? Both. <laughs> oh, as an employee, the way I look at it with our team, it's, it's really to try to help them achieve their goals. And I sort of touched about that just a moment ago, not yeah. specifically, but it, what are their goals and what we do specifically within our team, and we got a lot of specialists within our group itself, um, is that we try to understand what their goals are, because that's the first questions I ask them. And the reason why is everybody's goals are different. Somebody might say, I'm looking to buy this home for two years because then I'm going to relocate. Or some people say that this is my retirement home, or some people say, I'm downsizing or upsizing. And you can specialize loan programs according to their goals. And that's where a lot of people in our industry miss the boat. 
is understanding that and then therefore giving them proper advice. If you understand what to even give them in terms of advice. Uh, so that's what our team focuses on is a, how can we help the client achieve their goals? And the other thing that we do because we manage our own PL, therefore I can increase or decrease interest rates that we charge consumers. Uh, so therefore, if I choose to ch charge less, um, that's a win-win for all parties. It, it makes us feel good at night knowing that we look for the best deal for the client in the United States based on our 68 banks we work with. Uh, so that again, makes me sleep very well at night knowing we provide this kind of service. Consumers yeah. in, in our, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, so consumers don't know that until we tell them our value proposition. Um, now, consumers that work with us, so that's what we, I reinforce with my team. Uh, one, one point I have to bring up real quick, and my team got a little upset with me, the interest rates uh, had decreased uh, in 24 hours, 48 hours after the client had a sales contract, we registered with the bank and, and typical lenders, like 99.9% .9 of us, we like, cool, we got the loan already at a bank, we move on to the next client. Two days later, the rates came in the client's favor. We flipped the loan to another bank. Two days later, it happened again. We did it a third time. That process from start to finish saved that client almost $3,000 in actual cash. So the clients, to, to sort of focus on what they like about us from what we're being told with our reviews, mm -hmm. is that you, you really have helped us out. You really yeah. saved us a lot of money. And it doesn't matter if they're looking at online institutions or the local FDIC or the local mortgage banker or broker. It's the way we set up our team, our mantra, as we look out for the client's best interest by trying to find them the best deal we can find them in the United States. So they know we go to the nth degree for this, for them, and then they also feel as part of the team. And uh, it, it works beautifully because the amount of referrals we get from the clients themselves is, is rather, rather impressive. Like there's a gentleman and I can give you a hundred stories in the last six months that was an NFL football player with the Cardinals. He referred us, we did five deals for him. He referred us to his, his one cousin in California. He referred us to his other uncle. And so we're doing loans for, you know, the whole family now. It's yeah. just because they're like, this guy took care of us. The team took care of us. These are the people you need to speak to. So that's what we get feedback from the clients that work with us as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And like having those referrals, like it makes you feel so great. And you know, you, you really are, you know, impacting people in a positive way. And when people are buying homes, that's such a huge purchase. And obviously most people's number one thing is they want to save money. So the fact that you guys are you know, doing everything you can to do that is really awesome. And yeah, it makes us feel good. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and like you said, win, win, everyone, everyone wins at the end of the day. Correct. So. Correct. Well, do you have any, I know it's the beginning of the year. Do you have any goals coming up for your business this year or your team? So that's a good question, actually. Uh, we did round table about that conversation about goals for this year. We had a record banner year in 2021. It was better exactly. than 2020. Um, so our trajectory is increasing. Our, our volumes in, uh, and normally during Christmas time, and I'm talking primarily those two weeks between Christmas and New Year's, it really slows down. People are not really doing stuff when it comes to finance, and it allows us to take get our internal house in order, if you will, for the upcoming year. We were slammed in the, the Christmas and New Year's week of contracts coming in. I actually got a contract on Christmas Day. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and so the market's still going great is the point. And even with incre increased interest rates coming up, people understand the importance to possibly look at purchasing in a shorter time now, maybe versus waiting six months or one year or two years or what have you. Uh, so in terms of our projection goals is we hope or assume just by not doing anything different that our, our volume is going to increase by another 25% this year. In fact, um, I've hired somebody recently. We're about to hire another person and maybe even a, another person the next uh, couple, maybe two weeks uh, on our team just because of how well we're growing. Just a basic all word of mouth because we don't advertise and we don't market. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. We have a business that just kind of regenerating, you know, leads and referrals for you. Yes, absolutely. So I feel like we kind of covered this, but like, is there anything else that you specifically like love about your business or your job? You know, every day is a new day. I can tell you that, <laughs> you know, as long as you've been doing this you know, over, on Friday, I got a call from a listing agent about the way they're drafted up a contract. And, you know, I, I have two different hats that I wear. I have like a legal hat, well, actually three, a legal hat, financing hat. Then I also have like the real estate hat and understand what realtors plights are and trying to get contracts approved, you know, a little bit of background. I used to own Prudential Real Estate in Southern Arizona. So part of um, the value proposition we offer to our real estate partners is I understand your plight. I understand what your goals are, what you're trying to get accomplished at the end of the day. I mean, everybody has different things they want to do, but at the end of the day, they're all pretty much the same types of goals. And so we help 
to those realtor partners that we work with achieve those goals. Um, but in regards to me personally, it's it's uh, every day is a new day um, by watching the bond markets, what's happening with unemployment rates. You know, I'm, I'm watching the news at four in the morning, seeing what's going on with China, because that does affect at times what's happening with our economy, uh, what's happening overseas, what's going on with uh, the COVID variants, how that's also modifying what happens with our interest rates, because it will increase and decrease accordingly based on projections of income flow for corporations, which I can talk an hour about that. But with that, <laughs> so I'll stop you. I'll stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> Stop myself. We, might have to do, we might have to do a second interview. <laughs> yeah, no, no, about the economy. And, you know, I've been interviewed on the news multiple times about this topic, but it's, it's interesting how all these different variants can affect what happens in real estate and happens with, with, with within people's personal dynamics when it comes to their own potential budgets or personal budgets, if you will. So, you know, it, it's a challenge every time. So the way I look at it also is like every customer or every client based on their goals is like a puzzle. And we're trying to put the puzzle together for them and with them and then explain options and programs and help them achieve their goal. That's, that's the fun part about the job. I love the puzzle analogy. That's cool. It is. We're all a puzzle. Yeah. At the end of the day, when you get it all flat, though, it's still basically the same type of puzzle, but it's a puzzle where you're trying to help people put their pieces together for them. Yeah, I like that. Um, all right. Well, we're going to wrap it up, but is there okay. anything else that you would like to anyone to know about you or your business or maybe any advice that you might have for people trying to get into the market right now? In, in terms of getting into the, in the real estate market, um, you know, real quick on budget. Let me, and I talk all the time to clients about budget and all the respect, it doesn't matter if you're buying a $150,000 home or $5 million home. I have the same kind of conversation with both types of clients. And behind the scenes as bankers, we do budgets for consumers. We call that debt to income ratio. But mm -hmm. often what I talk to clients about is choices as well. So like when I did with first time home buyers, um, there was, a, I'll give you an example. There was clients and I asked them and I knew how much money they make. And I said, well, based on the amount of money you're making, you should have X number of dollars in savings. If you don't have X number of dollars in savings to buy a home, that means you're spending it somewhere. It's going somewhere, right? So my analogy is, okay, do you like Starbucks? Yes. So both you and your wife go to Starbucks every day. You know, when I started this analogy, it was five bucks, but it's probably six dollars now. Okay. One of you goes to Starbucks on the way home. So that's eighteen dollars a day that you're spending getting coffee times that times three months. There's your down payment. So the question is, is what's more important to you, buying a home or Starbucks? I don't judge. I don't care what you do, but it's my job to give you information. So therefore, you can make an educated decision on what makes sense for you and your family. Yeah. There you Starbucks, go. <laughs> Starbucks in moderation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that. And I feel like especially because people don't even realize it because especially with credit cards now, you swipe it and you're done. You're on your way. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And we don't audit our bank statement seeing where our money went to this last month. But it has to do with priorities. You know, we all have different priorities and that's okay. Again, I'm not there to judge. I'm just there to explain, you know, what your choices are and your choices have that affect you in terms of your finances and growth over time. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for the advice and um, jumping on an interview today. It was super great um, meeting you and getting to learn about your business. I hope it was very valuable. Um, and thanks everyone for watching. If you or anyone you know might, inter uh, uh, might benefit from an interview like this with me, please don't hesitate to reach out. And um, you can find this interview on parkbench.com forward slash McCormick dash ranch dash Scottsdale. Um, but yeah. Hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thanks again, Frank, for joining. All right. Bye.